Alright, hello everybody, and welcome to another edition of the D-Pad Discourse. This edition will be for the week that started on October 5th, 2014. Alright, well the biggest, I guess you could say, controversy that came out last week was the news about Assassin's Creed Unity. Uh, Assassin's Creed Unity will be 900p resolution on the PS4 and the Xbox One. But the biggest deal about uh, this situation is that Ubisoft released a uh, statement earlier in the week saying that they made the game 900p on both systems to avoid all the debates about resolution and all the console wars and stuff. And it's funny because that uh, PR statement basically did the opposite. It basically set the fuel to all the uh, console wars and, and excuse me, resolution debates that's been going on for uh, multiple uh, multi-plats, multi-plats that haven't been 1080, 1080p on both systems. Uh, you be, uh, th this situation is funny to me because it all stems from uh, Ubisoft's uh, bad PR statements, you know, them saying, oh, we did this to avoid uh, debates and stuff. And it's just because that alone is a silly reason to make a game 900p and it also uh, brings in the whole questioning of okay if that's the reason why you guys made the game 900p then couldn't it have been you know higher 900p on the more powerful system and in this case the more powerful system is the uh, PS4 so it, it it was just a mess I don't, they definitely didn't think uh, the statement through because if it just would have stated you know that the game is 900p on both systems and then say anything else about it while people would have been upset about it not being 1080p, at the same time, a lot of people would have assumed that, oh, maybe it's 900p because this game is being made specifically for uh, the current-gen consoles and it isn't coming to uh, last-gen consoles. So, so therefore, they're using more power to uh, you know make the game and therefore it can't be 1080p. Or, you know, maybe some people still think, okay, even though it's 900p, maybe it will have a better frame rate or something on the PS4 since the PS4 is a uh, more powerful system than Xbox One is. But, you know, due to them just stating blatantly that the game, at least in their PR statement, that the game will be uh, basically the same on both systems, you know, parity, you know, that goes away, you know, people don't have to wonder, you know, why is it 900p on the PS4, they'll just use uh, Ubisoft's uh, statements and say, okay, you guys didn't put much effort into the game. Now, while there's many people are saying that they're not gonna buy uh, Assassin's Creed Unity due to uh, this whole situation, the game's still gonna sell really well. Again, it's Assassin's Creed, the, the series is popular, and a lot of people just wanna play the new uh, version of the game. On top of that, Assassin's Creed Unity, uh, in comparison to Black Flag, uh, Black Flag was a launch title for the uh, PS4 and the Xbox One. And since then, there's there's way more people with Xbox Ones and PS4s than there was, you know, back one year ago. So therefore, Assassin's Creed Unity is definitely going to sell better than uh, Assassin's Creed Black Flag on the uh, PS4 and Xbox One. So the game's going to do well regardless. It's just amazing how uh, Ubisoft didn't see that this uh, that their statement would give off this uh, reaction. And on top of this, uh, Dragon Age, well, excuse me, EA responded to this by saying that Dragon Age will be using the full power or the full uh, capabilities of the PS4 and Xbox One, and therefore the game will be 900p on the Xbox One and 1080p on the PS4. Now, first of all, the same thing is funny because it's a direct response to uh, Ubisoft's uh, whole situation was Assassin's Creed uh, Unity, but on top of that, no game during this early point of uh, this PS4 and Xbox One gen will be using the system to their fullest capability. I mean, it's 2014, and you know, a 20 a game that's coming out this year isn't going to use the system to the fullest power like a game that says come out in 2017 for the PS4 and Xbox One. It just you know, isn't possible. So. While, you know, I, I get what it's meant by the whole maximize statement, I'm, I still, you know, don't buy it because, again, 
we're still in early prime this gen and developers are going to get more clever and better in terms of finding out ways to use these systems to their uh, fullest power. But anyway, and also uh, on top of that, the game's resolution, uh, Dragon Age resolution is probably set in stone months before this whole situation about Assassin's Creed even happened. So it's just funny how many people think that they set the game to those resolutions just due to uh, Assassin's Creed, uh, this whole situation with Assassin's Creed uh, Unity. But anyway, in terms of getting back to Assassin's Creed Unity, uh, again, the statements were terrible. They basically said that, hey, we're not doing all we can for uh, the system. But at the same time, it seems like some people are just mad at the game being uh, less than 1080p, which I find a bit sad. I mean, I understand why people will be, will be disappointed by it, but I find it a bit sad because, in my opinion, I think people should be mad at the fact that uh, they stated that they're not doing all they can to the game to make it as best as it can be. You know, be mad at that because it's possible for a developer to make a game that doesn't use, that they don't put much effort in and still have the game be 1080p. But on the flip side, it's also possible for a developer to put all their effort into a game and have that game be less than 1080p. So if anything, be mad at them not putting a lot of effort into the game, not the fact that the game is less than 1080p. Alright, in other news, the release date for Smash Brothers Wii U has been uh, revealed. Finally, we've been waiting for this date for a long time now, and they finally, uh, Nintendo finally restated that the game will be coming out November 21st. I'm really excited for the game. I'm a big uh, Smash Brothers fan. Uh, I love the uh, Smash Brothers games. I didn't play the one for the GameCube that much because none of my friends really had a GameCube. I only had one friend with a GameCube, so I only played it a couple times. But overall, it's a fun game, and I'm looking forward to seeing the new improvements they make for the Wii U version. Now the 3DS version has been doing really well. It's been uh, selling out in multiple places. I still don't have the 3DS version. I'm, I'm still you know, waiting to see if I can get it on sale maybe during some uh, Black Friday sale or something like that. But I'm going to get it because there's I know uh, people who own a 3DS who are getting the game or who already have the game and they don't have a Wii U so I want to play with uh, those people. So again I'm pumped for Smash Brothers and I'm will more than likely be getting, uh, well I will be getting both versions, but hopefully I'll be able to get some type of deal for them. Alright, and to know this is just another D-pad discourse, uh, Drive Club has had a pretty uh, iffy launch. Uh, the game has been having a lot of online issues, and this is bad for uh, two reasons. Uh, the first main reason, I would say, is due to the game being delayed. Uh, the game was originally going to be a PS4 launch title, and it got delayed almost, you know, a, a year after its uh, originally set date. And the second reason is due to Drive Club being, uh, well, it was created as being a online experience, you know, a game in which you and your friends be in the club and you know just race around, you know, top them on the leaderboards or top them in stats, you know, similar to what uh, Need for Speed has been doing in terms of the auto log stuff online integration and it's bad in terms of that too because I mean that's a huge part of the game the online features were a main focus of the game and you know due to the online problems people can't use uh, those features now this is alongside the game having mixed reviews I mean uh, the game's reviews haven't been terrible but it's I would uh, assume that people thought that the game would do uh, better in reviews and with the online features, you know, not being able to uh, work, the game is pretty much, at least according to many people, a bare bones uh, racer, you know, a, a racer similar to what you expect from the uh, PS2 generation in terms of uh, amount of features. So overall, it's uh, pretty amazing that, uh, you know, this could happen to a game that's been, you know, delayed. But at the same time, hopefully the features, you know, get back to working. I mean, PS4 owners have been looking forward to a racer for a long time. I mean, the system, the, the system's only racer really is uh, Need for Speed, well, excuse me, before Drive Club released, this is, the system's only racer was Need for Speed Rivals, and that was a launch title, so there hasn't really been that many race, well, any racing games since then, since, uh, you know, before now, before Drive Club's release. So hopefully the uh, features get back to, to uh, you know, being fixed. Uh, there's been talk about the developers planning some type of 
I guess you could say like a refund or a way of saying, you know, sorry about these uh, issues that have been happening in the drive club, but we'll see what happens in terms of that. But again, like I said before, hopefully all these problems get fixed uh, pretty soon because there's a lot of people that want to, you know, play the game and like the game, but just want more features, more online features, the features that they uh, were excited about before the game release. All right, and now it's another edition of the D-Pad Discourse. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Uh, I've been gone away for a few weeks, not due to the things that were really important, but just things that came out out of nowhere and I had to get them uh, straightened out. So hopefully you guys don't mind, and hopefully you guys will be back next week for another edition. Until then, Brad Davis saying bye everybody.